G'day, I'm Clive and welcome. We're back at the Armadale Reptile Centre with the lovely Lucy. There you go, new name for her. <laughs> and we're looking at the tiger snake today. The snake that's got a bad rep for no reason at all. And it's the importance of these videos is to teach people how to react around them and why the snakes do what they do and how you can prevent it. So we'll take it over to you, let you expand on that. I shall. So tiger snakes get more of a negative reaction from people um, because animals have two responses to danger, flight or fight. Um, majority of the time, a lot of animals would use the flight response, um, but some animals uh, tend to head towards a fight response earlier um, than others. So a tiger snake is one of those animals. So he will spend less time giving you warnings um, before he retaliates um, in a way that's seen as a bit more sudden and aggressive to people. So whereas a dugite might um, give you lots of warnings as you get closer and closer and closer that he's angry, um, a tiger snake might straight away, if you get too close to him, he might straight away arc up um, and begin to hiss flatten his neck out, make himself look bigger, more intimidating. Um, they'll do the same thing though, if you continue to push your luck, they will um, potentially strike, but with a closed mouth. Um, so they won't actually use their fangs or anything like that. It's just a kind of a hit to make you aware that they're there. Um, and then if after that, and you're still pushing your luck, well, then you can't really blame him for defending himself properly. Um, and then that's where incidents can occur. But, and yeah. like normal snakes, the length of their body to their, yeah. their, their striking. Yeah, so on average, a snake will strike to half of its body length. So you have a two meter snake, he'll strike to about a one meter beyond um, his body. Um, so if you're within that range, you're uh, it goes against everything I know, you're better off staying still and just pretending that you're a tree, you're no danger, you have, they have nothing to fear from you. Um, but if you're beyond that strike distance, you're very safe to slowly, quietly, just move on backwards um, and then just get out of their space, let them realise that you're not actually a threat to them and then that's when they'll go, okay, this is not fun anymore, I'm going to go have something to eat. Um, and they'll move off on their yeah. own. The, the other misconception is them chasing. Yes. So tiger snakes are probably number one for, I've heard people claim that they've chased them. Um, and I think that comes from the fact that they, they won't back down as quickly as other species will. Um, and they will present themselves as bigger, tougher and scarier than they are. Um, and then they will do this closed mouth lunge or strike at people. Um, and you know, I understand you're, you're scared. Um, it's like the fisherman's story. It gets bigger and dangerouser and scarier every time you tell the story. So it's also attempting to get to their safe. They will. Yes. So, um, that's another possibility what they're doing. So sometimes when, uh, you encroach into their territory, they know their area incredibly well. Um, they know where their safe zones are. They know where they go to eat. Um, so big, dangerous, um, giant to them comes clomping along into their space. Oh, well, I need to go home. Um, but unfortunately that home is between the legs of that big giant and down the other side under a rock into a hole, wherever it may be. Um, they've got no choice, but to go that way, it's the only way they're going to feel safe and secure. So sometimes they may head towards you or in a direction that seems like it's towards you but really they're going to their safe area so like always if you're still if you're calm if you're relaxed you're a tree that's all they see you as is a very strange looking big tree um, no danger no issue i'm just going to go home i feel threatened um, and that's all it is so when the females they give birth to live or do you it's live young. Yeah. Yep. It's one of the very few species um, that give birth to live, um, live young. Um, same as all other, uh, most other snakes. Um, parental care is not uh, something that's big on their mind. Uh, mother carries the babies um, instead of incubating them as eggs. She obviously incubates them inside. 
um, gives birth to them um, and instead of knowing as hatchies, we'd normally call them hatchies if they come from eggs, when they're live born they're called neonates. Um, and um, once they're all born, well that's it, life's over for them inside mum and they are completely on their own. They all disperse like every other species, find their own little space um, and that's it. Mum can go off and do it again. And the strength of the venom, misconception in a lot of snakes, yes. the babies yes. that is. Um, it's the same across all venomous snakes. Um, when, a, when a juvenile is born, they are just biologically smaller than an adult. Everything about them is smaller. Fangs, venom sacs, everything. So the yield or the amount of venom in their body is incredibly small um, and how far their fangs can penetrate, penetrate into skin is very small. Um, not to say you cannot have a reaction or for example pets or children or the elderly may be impacted by it but um, you'll will find that uh, bites from a juvenile usually end up with if there is venom in your body it doesn't really do anything to you but it's still always important that you stay safe around them um, but you certainly don't need to treat them as more dangerous than an adult um, just like everything else they want to live they want to survive so they want to run away um, and they'll do anything they can to to achieve that there's no one way of associating the snake because it comes in variations of colors a tiger snake's an interesting one because um tiger snake is broad across all of australia um so you have two kind of main groupings so you have your eastern states tiger snakes um and that does include a few of the islands like tasmania and the uh, things in the bass strait as well um, and then you've got your southwest tiger snake um, as well so that's the one that or the western tiger snake as it's more commonly called that's the one that we have so in the in the southwest really there's only one color morph that you come across um, and it's the reason it's got the name tiger snake um, because it's black across the top um, and then it has a yellow um, to even orange body underneath and that color then comes up over its body and extends over to its back it can extend all the way across or it can just kind of come up and then just lightly meet on the back and then it looks like stripes or the tiger stripes so um, in our southwest the tiger snake is a very very same looking animal there's not a great deal of variety the only variety really comes from how far up those stripes go but a black and yellow striped snake to that degree is um, typically known as a tiger snake. There are again smaller snakes out there that have a black and white stripe to them, uh, sorry black and yellow striping to them um, and they can be misidentified as tiger snakes. Um, the Jan's banded snake is probably the most commonly misidentified as a tiger snake. Uh, that's a harmless snake um, and unfortunately because of a, a fear towards the venomous snakes um, there's a lot of little snakes that do get um, dispatch because of it but you will find that in the eastern states they can have a bit more variety um, and the coloring gets lost a little bit in some of the island species but in our western tiger snake that yellow and black is that's basically it um, yeah there's not much variety in them one of the most uh, beautiful snakes is a contrast of two colors when they first yes. shed that yellow is just so very vibrant yeah, yeah. And nice shiny black yes them. yes very vibrant and because they are a highly localized to the southwest area animal um, and they habitat in areas of marsh and swamps and things like that they naturally are in areas of a much cooler environment than a lot of the other lapid species so that black top to them the coloring on the top of them is very very important so dark colors as everyone knows absorbs more heat and more sunlight as opposed to light colors um, the ability then to flatten and flare out their neck um, is more of a typical trait of the black snake family what they're from um, and that's twofold so one bigger neck bigger animal looks scarier and more intimidating 
but also a bigger neck means a bigger surface area so they have more skin to absorb more sunlight and more heat which is incredibly important for them to be able to exist in these cooler climates um, and also to be able to move and get about during even the cooler days um, of the year where other snakes might not be as yeah. so active. Yeah, so what, what's one of the things I was just going to say <coughs> that they last longer in the sense when it's cooler and all the years are yes adult, especially in the evening when they're out hunting yep. for their food yeah so because yep. they predate heavily on amphibians that's a main part of their diet um frogs are more active when the weather is wet um they're more active in your winter autumn period sort of thing so naturally your tiger snakes to do need to be also active in those periods um Everything is more active in summer, that's just a given, um, just the way they're designed. But on the warm winter days, it's not uncommon for people to see tiger snakes. And, and it can be surprising for people because they think, well, winter, no, nothing would be around reptile-wise. But no, a nice warm winter day and um, big sunny, sunny day and they could be out, definitely, yeah. Is there anything else we, we can add or...? Not particularly, I mean, they're... They're not a great deal different to the dugite in all their aspects. Um, there's been several occasions where people have seen them swimming. So they're one of the few few species of snakes that it's not uncommon to see them swimming around. Um, and they're also one of the few, even though they're classed as a terrestrial animal, so a ground dwelling animal, um, they actually have a pretty strong ability to climb. Um, so it's not uncommon to see them climbing up reeds and marshes and things like that just to whether they're getting more sun, whether they're looking out to see if there's something around, whether there's a nice yummy frog or even a wading bird or anything like that that they can see close by. Um, but they have also have been known to get quite high off the ground, um, even up to 1.5 to 2 metres off the ground. So it's not always just looking on the ground. Um, sometimes it doesn't hurt to look around in your whole surroundings. They, they like to bury themselves in the leaves. And they that. will, yeah, yeah. They, they can do if um, they've, say, had enough sun, they've had enough to eat, and they just now just, you know, have another midday siesta. Um, they will may bury themselves around. But the good thing for them about marshes and swampy areas is it, there's so much vegetation around the water edge, um, and it's vegetation that most well predators wouldn't venture into so they are relatively safe in their little little areas um, around there well i got a bit out of that myself there's a few things i didn't know which is good and i hope you did too so i hope you've enjoyed this video and thank lucy and if you have enjoyed it and you're not a subscriber please go down below click on the subscribe button click on the notification bell next to it and select all so you can be notified of all future videos and hit that thumbs up button the like and if you are already a subscriber again i thank you very much <laughs>